I'd like to say a few words about um, the role of external actors, uh, generally speaking, in the Council of Europe uh, in particular. Um, so, as uh, was mentioned, I'm the head of the Council of Europe's office in Bosnia-Herzegovina. And uh, so to start with external actors, everyone knows that external actors have been a driving force in Bosnians, Bosnia's history for quite a long time. But just to focus on the recent past and the horrific war uh, that took place from 92 to 95, which was itself a result of uh, external aggression, a lack of external intervention left a civilian population victimized for nearly four years, and in the end, the peace finally was negotiated externally, and a new political system for Bosnia was drafted and adopted by external actors in Dayton. I see no benefit in any of us ignoring the fact that this externally imposed constitution, which was never adopted or endorsed by the population and citizens of Bosnia, leaves the domestic political actors uh, to navigate basically stormy seas in a rickety and unmaneuverable skiff with the international community today uh, satisfying itself mostly to stand on the shore shouting advice. So the ship which was given to Bosnia-Herzegovina and Dayton we already know um, is basically unseaworthy if you want to uh, sail to Brussels if, to use this metaphor all the way uh, to the end. Uh, European integration, particularly EU integration, has a large share of technical aspects. Adoption of the key establishment of agencies, harmonization of laws, and, and things like this. But all of the European institutions, and first of all the Council of Europe, uh, already in 1949 in its statute, specifically acknowledged that Europe <coughs> is first and foremost a community of values. Democracy, human rights, and the rule of law, these are our common values that undergird all of the additional structures that have been built uh, since then, economic and monetary policies, military and security cooperation, and the like. Uh, these are the basic uh, construction material for a seaworthy ship. However, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, the constitution which was imposed upon it contains an initial faulty compromise with these fundamental building blocks. Uh, inherent leak, if you like. Uh, the Bosnian constitution at the outset recognizes one privileged class of citizens, constituent peoples. And rather than building the sovereignty of the state on the value of citizenships, citizenship and the benefits of human rights for the individual as a bearer of the rights and of the citizenship, it confers a preponderant share of power in public affairs to members of the privileged class of constituent peoples, Serbs, Bosniaks, and Croats. Uh, in 2009, the Sejdic and Finci ruling of the European Court of Human Rights demonstrated clearly the incompatibility of this aspect of the Constitution with the European Convention for Human Rights. Um, the discrimination and disadvantage of citizens who are not members of the constituent peoples. That judgment was specifically confined to the presidency in the House of Peoples because that was the, the complaint that was uh, brought before it. Um, however, it should be clear, although uh, not necessarily the case, should be clear that at the heart of the issue is the inequality of citizenship. The irony today lies in the fact that the Bosnian state parliament and the political party leaders are charged with amending the constitution to implement this judgment. They are members of constituent peoples all. And <coughs> I couldn't help but thinking of uh, you know, the beginning of the last century where the old male legislatures in so many countries were charged with deciding whether or not women should have suffrage. Uh, it's a little bit a similar situation today with the constituent peoples uh, charged with determining what place and what scope of equality should be made available to those who are not members of constituent the others. Now, uh, specifically talking about the Council of Europe, um, I'd like to just emphasize three main um, intentions, I guess, uh, that the Council of Europe has um, with Bosnia-Herzegovina as its member state and with its office in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, first of all, just to, to remind you, uh, Bosnia became a member state of Council of Europe in 2002, and when it did so, it was uh, after signing on to <coughs> a substantive list of commitments and obligations. Uh, and those commitments and obligations basically were um, the promises made to the Council of Europe that 
being allowed to, to join this pan-European intergovernmental organization, they would fulfill. And uh, 10 years later, I have to say we're not there yet. Uh, so the first intention of the Council of Europe as an external actor vis-a-vis -vis to Bosnia-Herzegovina is that it should fulfill its accession commitments and obligations. And the second intention is that Bosnia-Herzegovina should be a full uh, participating and active member of our organization. Um, it should demonstrate its capacity to be a good member state and especially in the context where it is striving to become a member state of other important organizations, to start by showing that it can uh, be a good member state where, where it already is. And by that, it would mean, first of all, actually participating, being present in all of the different intergovernmental committees and <coughs> expert groups that the Council of Europe uh, has. And uh, in order to do that, they would, of course, need to appoint people who are the most appropriate person to participate in those bodies and not, again, be uh, blocked by the question of the ethnic balance between the constituent peoples. I'll come back to that again. And then third uh, is uh, that Bosnia-Herzegovina should make the best possible use of the Council of Europe and the resources made available to it by being a member state of the Council of Europe in order to move further with its European and Euro-Atlantic integration. Um, and that means... Uh, making use of all of the, the standards, uh, the conventions, the treaties, the monitoring mechanism, the peer review mechanisms, um, the different bodies which provide advice on legislation and so on that is available basically for all aspects of the Copenhagen criteria within the Council of Europe. And by, by doing this, Bosnia would have a chance at least uh, to build uh, Finally, a seaworthy ship that could have a chance to make it uh, and be reliable enough uh, to make it uh, to EU integration. Um, that being said, I come back to the original point, which is that um, the external actors of which Council of Europe is partly one, because I would also emphasize that uh, Council of Europe is also uh, maybe not an internal actor, but at least also a partner in the sense that Bosnia-Herzegovina, by being a member state of Council of Europe, is also uh, part of the governance of Council of Europe. So this is, uh, let's say, also a partnership uh, type of relationship. And I think there it's, it's really critical that as an internal, external actor, the Council of Europe is not just standing on the shore shouting advice uh, for the crew of a ship <coughs> which has no chance uh, to make it, but actually jumps on board and lends a hand with the oars. And so I'll finish with that <laughs> silly <laughs> metaphor uh, there. Thank you very much. Thank you.